Hey everyone, it's Eric here from Netflix. Got another video for you guys today. Today uh, is a very nice, beautiful, it's a Tuesday afternoon, and we're gonna be looking at a uh, USB that's a mail in USB. It's a much older one, it's a SanDisk, it's this one of the SanDisk 2.0. You can tell by it's not blue inside, right? So it's a much older one. Um, uh, same type of interface though, it has like a little nice little design there though for light and stuff when you plug it in. Customers working on a laptop, they usually put um, important documents and data on this lab on this USB and um, they plugged it in uh, just to back up some more stuff and it looked like that this one started to fail because this is their main backup drive. Um, that does happen, we see that a lot. Um, it's usually not great to put a lot of important stuff, especially on a USB because over time, especially this is a much older USB, so um, over time, if you keep using it, um, how NAND works is NAND will eventually fail based usually on um, a certain amount written to that. Um, usually for SSDs, you'll see the warranty is covered by terabytes written, depends on how big um, the, the, uh, the NAND is usually for it, and not to mention that this is a PCB as well, it has a controller, so it has components and other stuff can fail, even though it's not a lot of voltage, but it still does have one. Um, they're not as well built as SSDs, but they're in here. They also gave us um, a USB to transfer the data to, so they're going with a SanDisk uh, USB again with it but i mean they're usually pretty good they have a nice controller it's better than any other type of aftermarket one or one that you get at um, some convention events that has marketing on it and it's a cheap NAND, cheap flash and then you expect right especially if it's like a two dollar usb it's going to fail pretty quickly because it's just very very cheap and they're not really worth it to put data on but we usually do them um we've seen a lot of videos that we do bench usbs or something like that but it looks like it's just not powering on so we don't see that there's obvious damage to it doesn't look to be crooked I don't believe so, because I plugged it in, right? It looks pretty straight for the most part. So, I got my extender here. Let's just see. Uh, we should see a light here because that's how these older ones work, even though it's a USB 3.0. Let's see what goes on. Come on, eh. It's the right direction. Oh, wrong direction there. All right, so plug it in. Oh, we see a little light. Flickers a few times. Nothing's coming up on my screen. And then look, it just faded. It just died there. So what does that really say? So usually something like that, when you see that, that's not any type of um, NAND problem, right? Because NAND problem would be more reading and writing. It could be a power issue or maybe an issue um, somewhere else, maybe on the connection or something like that. So that's what we're gonna find out today. So let's go ahead, open it up, uh, see what's going on with it, and get right into it. Oh man, got all my MacBooks on the side there. We're doing lots of other repairs to that as well. So let's let's bring what this USB is, uh, is gonna bring out. So, it's good. I don't need my light today because the lighting is pretty good. We're still in the early afternoon. And so let's go ahead and crack this open. So the lighting looks to be pretty good. So how are you guys today? Hope you guys are all doing well. Um, it's starting to get a little bit cooler out, right? We're in the Northern Virginia area, right outside of uh, Washington, DC. So it's pretty nice during the day. It gets a little bit cooler in the morning. Looks like that, if we actually look at the side here, it looks like maybe this has been a little bit, try, maybe try to attempt it to be open or something. Right, and it's always important to be pretty careful when you open these type of USBs because you don't want to knock any other components, especially if there's already a power issue <laughs> in there. Um, you don't want to knock something else that could possibly damage the USB further. So do we see any obvious damage? Looks to be okay, there's no nothing I can see. None of the pads look to be impacted there. So this is your main flash, right? That's where the, the storage is. Um, and this is your controller and there's obviously like capacitors and other things there. All right, so you have a USB, let's go ahead and plug it in. See what's gonna happen. So I see a light. Controller's getting warm. Let's see if it fails or if it just dies. Let's see that. Okay, so it looks like that the power, oh, something's there. Something's getting pretty warm. There's your NAND that's on the other side. It doesn't matter too much. Is that getting any more warmer? It doesn't look like it. It looks like it just kind of tried to power on and then it failed, right? Let's go ahead and try it one more time. Let's plug it in, see that? Sometimes the reflection can show something, but now it looks to be about dead. You don't see anything obvious. The, the controller did get warm for a little bit, then it kind of just died there. So maybe it's a connection problem that we have with the USB? What do you guys think, huh? That's a little bit of a tough one to know. There's a power failure. Let's try it again. 
It looks like it completely died. And um, we try to plug in again. Looks like it still completely dies there. So there looks like to be either a short or there's a problem with the connection inside. All right, so we're at the microscope. Well, let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the connection. The pads look to be okay. So most likely there isn't really a problem there. Um, you would see that pretty much pretty quickly. We do have a cap there, and we obviously have the NANDs here, which that's not going to be a problem when you have this type of issue when it's powering on and failing. That's usually not going to be a NAND issue, like most of the time. You probably have, because you have a PCB, right, you probably have a cap, and you have other connections there, so probably something does fail. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what we got here. Looks to be okay. What is that? I get a little bit closer. Let's see. Oh, what is this? So we go over here. So we get pretty close, and we actually see that there is a capacitor here. It looks to be a little bit damaged, right? Doesn't look too. Doesn't look like all the other ones, right? Exactly. Like this one should match this one over here, but we see that there may be a little bit of a hole in it. Let's go closer. It looks like that there is some damage to this capacitor here. And let's also check one more thing, because we already know that it's, it's damaged there, right? So let's go ahead and try one more thing. We actually do have our voltmeter, right? And what the voltmeter is going to do is also going to tell you if there is a short going on. And we can know that by hearing a noise. Touch this up. We see that this one is causing a problem there, right? And if we do it up here, this looks to be good. But if we go down here, all right. And that so this one does look like it has a problem obviously there's a physical damage to that so we're going to go ahead and just take that out So we have our fixed USB there. Let's go ahead and try it. Let's plug it in. So we got a light. Looks good. And actually it popped up and I got a little bit of an error with the CD drive, but it looks like it fixed it. Look, so now the light is actually staying on this time. It's not showing out. Let's go ahead and get the data. Blinking looks to be pretty normal. Let's go bring up our desktop. So go to our screen cap, and we do see this one actually had a dual partition where it shows a CD drive there, um, and then it also does show that it's about 8 gigabyte, so it's 8 gigabyte uh, USB, and it's pretty full for the most part. So we're going to go ahead and double click it, and we see all the data here. It's a lot of old stuff actually, so it looks like it's from like 2009, so it makes sense because it's a very old uh, USB. Yeah, so we were able to do recovery on it. It wasn't a, a normal type of head issue there or any type of bent USBs because we show a lot of those on the channel. We, are, we can also fix those. Uh, if you guys are interested in seeing something like that, if it's like a little vent and how, you, how we do a fix and recover the data for it, um, go ahead and check that out. We also have a video of showing how to do uh, controller replacements. So we kind of work with um, Flash all together. We do have those advanced tools to do that for Flash data recovery as well as normal a USB data recovery and lots of other hard drives and especially for MacBooks and stuff like that too. Just data recoveries in general. So if you guys are interested, go ahead and check that out. Subscribe for that. See you guys next time and thanks a lot guys. Appreciate it. Bye.